My name is Dr. Joanne Elmore. I'm a professor of medicine at the University of Washington School of Medicine. I have the pleasure of describing our article published in the British Medical Journal entitled, Evaluation of 12 Strategies for Obtaining Second Opinions to Improve Breast Histopathology Interpretation. As background, every year millions of women undergo breast biopsies. Pathologists take this breast tissue and they categorize it into one of four diagnoses that range from normal to atypia to ductal carcinoma in situ to invasive breast cancer. Previous work by our team and others has shown how challenging these diagnoses are for pathologists, in particular the middle diagnoses of atypia and DCIS. This previous work has documented extensive variability in the interpretation of breast tissue, with resulting concern about patient harm. An inaccurate diagnosis can lead to underinterpretation, resulting in delays in necessary treatment while over-interpretation can result in costly and potentially unnecessary therapies, including mastectomy, chemotherapy, or radiation therapy. Media headlines have sensationalized this topic, and they've suggested that second opinions could save your life. Second opinions are already being obtained in clinical practices, yet they might be obtained ad hoc, rather than following a systematic approach or a guideline for when they should be obtained. While significant changes in diagnosis have been reported in about 10% of breast biopsy cases upon secondary review, no studies have systematically compared different strategies for obtaining the second opinions as an approach to reducing errors. We have the unique ability to do this, to evaluate many different strategies of obtaining second opinions, and we were able to do this given the design of our breast pathology study. We took interpretations from 115 pathologists of 240 breast biopsy specimens. These were used as the starting point before the second opinions were tested. These diagnoses were then compared with expert consensus-derived reference diagnoses. Then misclassification rates for the diagnoses from the individual pathologist, they were then compared to the results after 12 simulated second opinion strategies. Examples of the strategies we evaluated include obtaining second opinions for all cases, obtaining second opinions based on the initial pathologist diagnosis, obtaining second opinions based on whether the first pathologist considers the case difficult, borderline, or desires a second opinion, and finally, obtaining second opinions from any pathologist or only from high volume pathologists who presumably have more clinical expertise. Our results can be summarized here. Accuracy improved significantly with all second opinion strategies, with one exception. We didn't see an improvement when second opinions were only obtained for cases with an initial diagnosis of invasive cancer. We also found that second opinions, they improved accuracy regardless of the initial pathologist confidence in their diagnosis or their experience. And finally, obtaining both first and second opinions from the high volume pathologist, this resulted in the highest accuracy in this test set. As digital pathology becomes increasingly incorporated into clinical practices, this may further facilitate our ease of obtaining these second opinions. Our findings are limited by the test set composition, which included a higher prevalence of difficult cases than in typical practice, and our pathologist only examined a single slide. In summary, we found that second opinions significantly improved the accuracy of breast pathology interpretations. However, Second opinions will not completely eliminate diagnostic errors. As our study noted, this is especially true for cases of atypia and low-grade DCIS. Additional research is needed to help optimize these diagnoses and the management of these very challenging cases. Thank you.